This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so today uh, I'll be discussing this uh, guideline sickle cell disease in pregnancy because the, there has been updated from the British uh, Society of Hematology guideline and in 2021. Okay, so I'll be discussing the guideline in few questions. And uh, this this topic is like very important part two people and part three people, especially for part three people because there are so many stations and you know tasks they come from sickle cell disease. So let's start with the basics of sickle cell disease. Usually, uh, like why it happens? Do we know it from our uh, um, the undergraduate days? But yes, the sickle cell disease will happen when there are two copies of B. abnormal copies of beta globin gene and this uh, each from uh, one from each parent okay and where the chromosome it occurs at the level of chromosome number 11 and if the person gets one single copy then it would be said to be sickle cell disease carrier or sickle cell trait and they have got no symptoms so these are little basics about sickle cell disease because when we answer the questions so sometimes you know we have to know These are few, uh, there are various variants of it. The most commonly that you find in the common uh, questions is HBSS and HBSC. And what is the difference? Little knowledge about that would be necessary. The, uh, that helps in answering the questions. So HBSS, in uh, HBSS variant, uh, from uh, each parent, there would be coding for hemoglobin S. Okay, so uh, the person will get uh, from both parents, hemoglobin uh, gene for hemoglobin S, and hemoglobin S is an abnormal form of globulin, uh, hemoglobin that will cause uh, sickle cell to become rigid. And when, whenever there are conditions where there is low oxygen, uh, then it will change its shape and it will become a sickle shape. And that you understand that then it will be fragile and break. So that usually causes uh, their main cause for sickle cell anemia okay double s is the most severe form of this disease second variant that we kind of see commonly will be hbsc one um, gene like hemoglobin s will be from one parent and uh, hemo another hemoglobin variant c would be from other parent so this will be hbsc this would be again sickle cell um, anemia, and but it would be in the mild form. Okay, so, so questions HBSS and HBSC most commonly written, and most of us, you know, we keep on forgetting that. So just I put it here. And what is HBS beta thalassemia? So here one gene will be uh, one um, like one hemoglobin S gene will be from one parent, and beta thalassemia other kind of hemo, hem, uh, hemoglobin abnormality from other parent. Okay, so though there are various variants are there, but most commonly that you see in the question, and we need to know will be H double S and HBSC. Okay, so this is just in basic knowledge about that. Now uh, again. The question comes from here that it is the worst, one of the most common inherited condition worldwide. And it do have effect on certain ethnic communities like African and Afro-Caribbean origin. It is like uh, incidence being quite high. So in your questions, the clue is Africa or Afro-Caribbean. So you have to kind of think of sickle cell disease. In UK, approximately uh, 15,000 people are affected and approximately 300 babies would be born uh, each year. That is the little knowledge from the guideline only. Then, as I already discussed, that SCD has got a group of conditions, okay? Most severe form will be HBSS that I have already discussed. Other will be compound heterozygous genotypes. And this you can see um, HB double S, HB SC, this I have discussed. Other will be HB SD Punjab, HB SE, HB SO Arab, HB S Lepore, HB S uh, Thalassemia. So, this part also I have discussed. But 
nobody is going to ask you this question no need to remember this also the, the important most commonly you find is hbs double s and hbsc and this is the most severe form this much knowledge about this would be enough now what happens really in um sickle cell disease what will be the pathophysiology so usually there occurs uh, whenever there are low oxygen conditions there occur polymerization of uh, abnormal hemoglobin because of that there would be for, uh, the uh, rigid and fragile sickle shaped rbc cells happen and this uh, when the cell becomes they are more prone to break down so there would be more increased breakdown of rbc that would lead to hemolytic anemia because sickle cell shapes uh, rbc they can't flow with the blood vessel easily and because of that uh, like uh, so it will lead to blockage uh, in the very small vessels because they can't flow so uh, that would cause as vaso occlusion in small vessels and because of that the acute painful crisis occurs so this is the, the uh, pathophysiology because if we know the pathophysiology then understanding of any condition from our basics become uh, very clear okay now what could be the complications of sickle cell disease and th that we should know the complication would be acute chest syndrome and pulmonary hypertension stroke renal dysfunction retinal disease avascular necrosis cholelithiasis and lung cell ulcers it would be necessary to know by the part 2 people because they may get question from here now uh, what could be the pregnancy related complications this uh, is important for both part 2 and part 3 uh, people what can happen to mother there could be increased chances of preeclampsia urinary tract infection and uh, like uh, venous thromboembolism and it will be like uh, 15 times greater than the general population okay and the and the, in the venous thromboembolism prophylaxis there had been change in the like management that i'll be speaking in up, upcoming uh, slides and what can happen to baby baby can have reduced growth weight iugr preterm delivery stillbirth and another important thing that baby would get inheritance so there would be in because it is an inherited condition so inheritance so these are the maternal complications and the fetal complication that can happen in if the patient has got a sickle cell disease so pre pregnancy counseling so you get direct uh, you know questions for part 2 people and part 3 there is a station about the pre pregnancy counseling so you should know that what points and what things you have to cover usually these patients are on annual review so as it is an inherited condition and it has got autosomal recessive inheritance so it is important that the woman should be uh, uh, like um, encouraged um, and uh, to engage with the partner testing before they plan pregnancy okay apart from this like they should be uh, counseled option so option that could be given to women is non intervention like nothing second when the patient is pregnant and she wants to know whether the baby has sickle cell disease or not then consideration for prenatal diagnosis like immunosynthesis or uh, uh, chorionic villus sampling or the patient is not pregnant there would be many scenarios and you have to do the counseling for the options the another scenario when the patient is planned have got sickle cell disease they are planning for pregnancy they ask you option then going for pre gamete diagnosis or pgd would be another option so these options you should know because to give you know explanation to the role players apart from this uh, like uh, um they uh, b before they want to uh, conceive there should be always optimization of health and so there should be screening for sickle cell de disease related complications so what uh, like what action plan uh, for chronic complication the most of them have got um, renal disease and uh, hypertension so there should be blood pressure creatinine and urine protein monitoring 
the increased chances of uh, pulmonary hypertension so if echocardiography has not been done in last year it has to be repeated and if it is abnormal of course cardiac review would be required they usually have chronic lung disease so possibility of low oxygen saturation so the oxygen saturation studies in all women sleep studies or pulmonary function test if it uh, they are required apart from this they usually have avascular necrosis so uh, review uh, like hip complications some of the movements like abduction rotation they would be affected so they had to review the uh, like uh, hip movements or hip complications now stroke if previous history of stroke is there and uh, the role of pre, uh, like uh, so there is a role of transfusion in during pregnancy if it is not already receiving this now in this guideline what they say if the patient is on uh, like blood transfusion uh, mode so her blood transfusion would con be considered during whole pregnancy also but uh, like if the patient has a history of stroke and she is not being given uh, blood on the regular basis in that particular situation once the woman of, um, gets pregnant so there is a role of transfusion during pregnancy even if she is not receiving it before okay so uh, uh, usually because of this all pain related issues the patient would be on chronic pain a long term opioids and the, they so they should be reviewed by the pain specialist or the chronic or pain management teams so these are the, uh, so the, before the patient wants to get pregnant so review of all uh, organ uh, uh, like how much the organs are affected and optimization of medical condition would be required and what really happen in the renal complications usually they have uh, like a glomerular hyperfiltration and microalbuminuria that would lead to development of proteinuria and chronic kidney disease later so prior to pregnancy they should be blood pressure monitoring and they should be like kidney function test and uh, like they can do albumin creatinine or protein creatinine ratio if the patient has got like uh, pcr more than 50 then there could be uh, uh, other causes rather than sickle cell re related causes so there should be complete investigation to rule out any possibility of any non sickle cell causes apart from this pulmonary hypertension and ventricular vessel function and early cardiac death are increased in uh, sickle cell disease so the uh, doppler echocardiography can be used as a non invasive tool for screening for pulmonary hypertension so if the patient has got uh, um, increased tricuspid regurgent uh, regurgitation velocity trv and so these people will be at high risk of getting uh, complications with the and also mortality now this is pre uh, review of her organ uh, related uh, organ complications or organ damage after that patient there should be some pre conception medication review also so uh, one thing that we know from the previous guideline all also that patient to be given 5 mg high dose of folic acid it should be given before conception and throughout pregnancy uh, you will get question many times from this line because all other conditions we are giving uh, folic acid till 12 weeks but sickle cell disease is only the condition where we are giving this before conception till whole pregnancy vitamin d as per national recommendation that antibiotic daily prophylaxis is required vaccination has to be updated and uh, if the patient is on uh, like uh, angiotensin receptor inhibitor uh, like uh, arb medications uh, they should be planned to review or stop it now about the hydroxycarbamide most of these women they are on hydroxycarbamide so ideally it should be uh, uh, discontinued and uh, uh, like uh, apart from this if the patient uh, is on any kind of iron chelator 
that also has to be stored before they want to conceive so these are the few things you have to remember if you are doing a task for pre pregnancy counseling so high dose folic acid throughout pregnancy vitamin d antibiotic prophylaxis vaccination update and change over of the anti hypertensive hydroxychloramide has to be uh, stopped and um, iron chelator also can, has to be stopped apart from this uh, like uh, what really happens in the sickle cell disease usually they have uh, like uh, the, the spleen keep uh, uh, there are episodes of infarction and the spleen becomes like small spleen or hyposplenic because of that there is a risk of capsulated bacteria this also you should know that there is a risk of uh, neisseria meningitis this streptococcus pneumonia and hemophilus influenza so th uh, these are the capsulated organisms that cause bacteria that they can cause uh, uh, like pneumonia and uh, or other meningitis or whatever the conditions so they should receive penicillin prophylaxis this would be the reason why they are giving antibiotic on the regular basis apart from this vaccination influenza vaccine has to be given a uh, um, yearly at the um, yearly basis so they should uh, annual uh, influenza vaccination and every 5 years so if it is not given in 5 years it has to be given this also question they uh, keep on asking on the regular basis so influenza annual review pneumococcal vaccine 5 year review just remember this apart from this usually because of the chronic pain they would be taking like pain kill uh, analgesics so paracetamol or codeine uh, containing analgesics are the first line that are offered in the pregnancy but if these are not affected nacid but nacid should be used with very caution before 12 weeks and after 31 weeks because there is a concern of premature closure of ductus artery ductus, uh, 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 ductus artery already know so this um, would be the medication review apart from this they have put some uh, updates about the patient who are or taking hydroxychloramide now what they are saying that if the hydroxychloramide is stopped then another, uh, uh, there could be replacement like they uh, they can um, treat, they can be managed with regular red cell erythrocytophoresis so like the plasma paresis is done similarly they are just uh, doing erythrocytophoresis so this could be done and another issues that has to be discussed when the hydroxycarbamide is stopped like um, it causes suppression so if it is stopped there would be increased risk of painful crisis chest syndrome and worsening of anemia and apart from this many of the women they are unable to even receive more more time the blood transfusion because of the allo antibodies and uh, and because of the transfusion reactions so if the patient is on hydroxychloramide there should be discussion between obstetrician hematologist and the patient whether hydroxychloramide has to be stopped or it has to be continued during pregnancy so that th there should be discussion about risk and benefit okay previous guideline they used to say that it has to be stopped and a uh, patient uh, should uh, take contraceptive for 3 months but th this is now change in this guideline about the hydroxychloramide so when you are speaking to the patient about stopping hydroxychloramide you have to give her an option of uh, like uh, um, red cell erythrocytophoresis you have to explain that there could be worsening of the complication and also like uh, like uh, so uh, and hydroxychloramide would be causing uh, like uh, pregnancy birth defects so if the patient is on hydrox so there should be discussion about the risk and benefit and uh, there should be referral to the fetal medicine unit for additional detailed ultrasound if the patient is on hydroxychloramide and she is pregnant so the risk be benefit analysis about the a hydroxychloramide has to be discussed with the patient so this is a, a the click like, this was not there previously
now uh, iron overload has to be reviewed uh, because uh, they uh, it is usually done by a cardiac mri or liver mri and if the patient has cardiac overload it has to be uh, treated before conception there should be rigorous chelation and if the patient becomes pregnant then chelation can again start in the third trimester with the dexofenaxamine uh, apart from this the guideline says that new medication like voxilotor serin serin uh, uh, cry uh, and glutamine these are the few drugs that cannot be used in pregnancy so they have to be considered stopping and when the pregnancy is confirmed or it is unplanned then also this kind of drug has to be stopped so from there the part two people you guys can get question that if the patient is taking a zone of voxilotor or a cry zenalizumab then or glutamine the that has to be stopped so these are few things about the pre-pregnancy care so part two people has to know everything in detail part three people have to know the points that what the discussion they have to turn they have to do if the patient is coming for pre-pregnancy counseling now now uh, after that when the patient anyone of you have got any question till here okay so let's move to antenatal care and this is important to know and this would uh, like uh, 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 there is a direct uh, case based discussion or the viva station that already come had come in the part 3 exam so in antenatal care so what are the components so first will be the uh, review the partner testing and uh, it uh, like uh, accordingly the documentation now th there should be uh, a screening program and the screening program usually done by 8 to 10 weeks of pregnancy and if they are if we are able to detect it early patient can be offered prenatal diagnosis like cvs or immunosynthesis now with regards to free fetal dna what the guideline says that studies are going on for the detection of free fetal dna in maternal circulation about the diagnosis of sickle cell disease but this approach is not yet available outside the research so uh, this is there so that means that option of free fetal dna uh, if the patient asks you you have to say that uh, we, uh, it is still under the research so prenatal diagnosis can be done with the cvs or immunosynthesis now what are the components so they, they should be whenever the patient is coming to you in the antenatal period there should be full assessment and review of medication vaccination organ damage and red cell allo antibodies there should be multidisciplinary approach obstetrician midwife expert in high risk antenatal care hematologist and there should be a specialist hematopathy team now usually uh, the like uh, in the early pregnancy vomiting could be a precipitator so the, they should not allow to continue and woman has to take help uh, early in the pregnancy now because there would be crisis uh, folic acid i already told that folic acid 5 mg continued throughout pregnancy and prophylactic antibiotic also has to be taken that is a penicillin iron supplementation should not be given uh, um, unless there is a evidence of laboratory deficiency uh, laboratory evidence of iron deficiency like routinely uh, if if you find a patient um, with the sickle cell disease in your scenario and they say the patient is having iron deficiency anemia or if they write you uh, symptoms then you can't blindly give the patient iron because these patients are at a risk of iron overload because of hemolytic hemolysis so you what you have to do you have to check for serum ferritin if serum ferritin is less than 30 then only it is diagnosed case of iron deficiency anemia then only iron supplementation can be done okay now in the scd patient aspirin to be given 75 150 milligram uh, from 12 weeks onwards to decrease preeclampsia and they should be monitoring for blood pressure and proteinuria 
uh, aspirin has to be reviewed by 36 weeks if whether it to be stopped because before delivery patient should be offered growth biometry scan four weekly from 24 weeks of pregnancy so these are the few elements or important points that you have to put when the examiner asks you how would you arrange antenatal care apart from this uh, at each appointment they should be given education about crisis prevention like patient should rest they, uh, uh, they should be like warm temperature or they should a sudden change temperature should not be there they should avoid infection and getting dehydration this i have already spoken iron supplementation can only be given if the serum ferritin level is less than 30 um, gram per liter otherwise uh, unless you have got this value you can't offer this patient iron so what, just in summary what is done in the first hospital appointment now it would be partner testing if it is not done before assessment of renal cardiac and retinal complication 5 mg folic acid discussion of prophylactic antibiotic measurement of oxygen saturation blood pressure msu and for a full blood count renal function test and protein creatinine ratio liver function test ferritin and blood group and skin so these are few things uh, testing that has to be done aspirin vitamin d has to be provided and vt risk assessment has to be done so it is important to remember this then you know you'll be able to explain in an organized manner when they ask you for antenatal care this is the table about the antenatal care from 13, 16 weeks onwards no need to just go through it just you need to know that they, every four weeks they are repeating full blood count and midstream urine the reason we already know because we want to know whether the patient is getting anemic or whether the patient is having anemia because mostly the this patient their risk of getting urinary tract infection now just a question to wake you up so blood transfusion to be done in 24 weeks of preg uh, pregnant woman so what will be the right choice anyone can answer ma'am b it is ab compa abo compatible extended rh negative cal matched and C cmd negative yes so uh, abo compatible extended h rh kale and cmb negative units to be given to the scd patient now blood transfusion in the pregnancy so uh, uh, this you will get in uh, like what type of blood abo compatible uh, rh kale and cmb negative this you will find in your part 2 exam so you should remember now this part i have already uh, spoken that if the patient is on long term transfusion for stroke prevention or for prevention of sickle cell complication they should continue regular transfusion throughout the pregnancy so this part you have to remember that if the patient is on transfusion her transfusion would continue even throughout the pregnancy also apart from this if transfusion may be required if the patient has got a cd complication in pregnancy such as chest syndrome or stroke or acute anemia now the prophylactic blood transfusion routinely not recommended but it can be considered if the patient has got severe previous medical obstetric fetal problems related to scd patient is on hydroxy carbamide due to severe disease or multiple pregnancy so profile these are the indications for prophylactic blood transfusion but it would be considered only now women with all antibodies because they are receiving so much of blood so there could be possibility of they having all antibodies if it is there they should be referred to the fetal red cell antibody clinic so you part two people you may get question from here for the monitoring apart from this whenever the prophylactic transfusion is done for these kind of women we really need to need to think what is the risk and benefit so who will get benefit if the transfusion is done the people having double s component because of severe disease the women having previous uh, uh, sickle cell complication 
uh, are likely to be benefit twin pregnancy patient likely to be benefit and all immunization patient likely to be benefit so these are the patients they may be likely to be benefit from blood transfusion prophylactic blood transfusion so the discussion about the risk and benefit has to be done you may get any question from sba though not appears to be important but i put it because i have to complete the topic now what could be the pre precipitators for vaso occlusive crisis so like it will be physiological physical stress dehydration nausea vomiting usually in first trimester of pregnancy there could be worsening anemia uh, uh, leading uh, leading to increase iron requirements increase red cell turnover all these condition leads to pro coagulant state the uh, big, uh, so the, all these changes that occurs in the pregnancy predisposes the pregnancy to vaso occlusive disease so patient so, occurs by uti influenza there would be increased cell crisis so this would give you a reason why the crisis are more common in the pregnancy during labor there would be like increased risk of dehydration hypoxia blood loss anemia over exertion and metabolic derangement so this would be causing um, uh, like uh, this would be the triggers or precipitators for the vaso occlusive crisis okay so this part is important for both people part two part three people there is a direct viable question about it like how would you manage the painful full occlusive crisis in the pregnancy so that we already know that pregnancy associated with increase in incidence of acute painful crisis both in hb double s or to lesser extent in hb sc cause being infection in dehydration anemia splenic en enlargement or vte how would you manage so patient would require to be admitted there should be multidisciplinary approach senior obstetrician hematologist obstetric anesthetist obstetric physician stress test nurses and midwife to be involved full set of observation for the patient admitted meos monitoring so blood pressure pulse respiratory rate temperature oxygen saturation and pain score there has to be report uh, recorded and repeated every 1 to 2 hour analgesia now another recommendation is that analgesia to be given within 30 minute the patient reaches hospital after initial assessment and pain should be controlled by the 60 minute after starting the analgesia okay for severe pain they are consider giving that morphine dimorphine oxycodone uh, by any route and depending on the patient condition but we already know that pethidine is avoided because of the toxicity and pethidine associated seizure in the sickle cell disease and nl with the analgesia like pain score sedation score and respiratory score usually monitor every 20 minute we need to send some investigations like uh, uh, basic investigation full blood count hbs percentage if the woman has double s uh, hb double s reticulocyte urea and electrolyte to find out the source of infection send the cultures throat swab Uh, midstream urine sputum cultures uh, to microbiology chest x ray if there are abnormalities on chest examination or if the woman is hypoxic a rest of the treatment would include iv fluids we have to get reviewed uh, very uh, 12 hourly because some of them has pre eclampsia and uh, there should there is a potential risk for the fluid overload thromboprophylaxis has to be reviewed whenever the patient admitted in the hospital and antihistaminic uh, for itching laxative for opioid induced constipation antiemetics for symptomatic treatment would be required now uh, what they say about the fetal monitoring if the patient is unwell and uh, baby is less than 24 weeks then usually additional monitoring is not required but from 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy fetal monitoring can be done by ultrasound scanning after 28 weeks daily ctg in addition 
to ultrasound scanning can be done so this is the complete answer to uh, for part 3 people how would you manage acute pain occlusive episodes or acute crisis during pregnancy anyone any question here it is very important any question no question okay ma'am role of and exchange transfusion ma'am oh i'll be just discussing that it will be coming okay yeah. usually uh, uh, like uh, in painful occlusive crisis like uh, uh, usually uh, uh, like transfusion is not done painful occlusive crisis okay it will come in a, a other uh, situation it is done usually in uh, acute chest syndrome in stroke or if the patient is having acute anemia so first they will be doing like uh, uh, blood transfusion but if the patient has severe disease or if the patient is not improving then they will consider them for exchange transfusion is it clear is it clear hello yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am okay now in acute chest syndrome this also comes as a viva station viva question so it usually happens the 10% of the pregnant women this 10% uh, incidence is from strategy and it is usually precipitated by lung infection resulting in inflammation loss of oxygen tension leading to sickling of cell and occlusion how the patient would present to you patient would present to you with a chest pain cough wheeze and hemoptysis what you will see on the examination pyrexia decreased oxygen saturation abnormal chest x ray in chest x ray there would be pulmonary infiltrates so this will be the with this you'll be um, with a new pulmonary infiltrates you'll be able to identify that you are dealing with a case of acute chest syndrome Uh, there should be differential diagnosis, and they will ask you in the exam. So differential diagnosis could be like acute chest syndrome, it could be pulmonary embolism, or it could be chest infection. How would you investigate the patient presented with acute chest syndrome? Basic investigation: full blood count, urea and electrolyte, CRP, ESR, ABG for, to detect hypoxia, and chest X-ray. Spiral CT. Uh, uh, it is better than VQ. Uh, if pulmonary embolism is suspected because chest uh, as chest syndrome can give uh, also give some perfusion defects so spiral ct investig uh, then uh, investigation for the infective causes that i have already discussed like blood culture sputum culture uh, or uh, or nasopharyngeal aspiration for viral testing now what will be the team management management will be the patient would be in icu or hdu managed with the acute uh, critical care team there should be oxygenation analgesia there would be antibiotics there should be broad spectrum antibiotic that can cover like uh, organisms such as s pneumonia and mycoplasma now there could be simple top up transfusion in early or less severe cases now this answers your question you were asking so simple a top up or tra yes, uh, transfusion may suffice in early and less severe disease but if the uh, there are features of clinical severity or there is a lack of response to only transfusion then consideration for exchange transfusion would be done now the things would be clear to you because of that i have color coded it because this is a common thing yes, that people Uh, that people get confused about the things has to be crystal clear in your mind now critical care team because some of the patient may require non invasive or invasive ventilation thromboprophylaxis uh, is necessary so hematologist to be involved and now this is the line is important for every of you uh, every one of you that if the patient has a acute chest syndrome that requires transfusion then rest of the pregnancy patient would be offered prophylactic blood transfusion uh, to maintain the pregnancy so this part is new in this guideline that was not there previous any guideline so if you start blood transfusion um, in the 
uh, chest syndrome treatment so whole pregnancy you have to consider giving her prophylactic blood okay so this part is important to know now this this was a treatment for uh, acute uh, like uh, acute chest syndrome Bo uh, management of painful crisis in pregnancy management of acute chest syndrome in pregnancy both are the viva stations for your part 3 exam and part 2 exam is full of questions now as it we did thrombo prophylaxis the we already know that the uh, um, patient assessment to be done if the patient is admitted to the hospital in the intrapartum in the postpartum period but now this is uh, this is again new in this guideline that women with scd considered for prophylactic lmwh from 28 weeks till 6 weeks and if additional factor like one more factor then it can be started from beginning of pregnancy so um, this is again change in this guideline previously it was sort of a risk factor now they are recommending every one of C uh, scd women in pregnancy to take lmwh from 28 weeks till 6 weeks postnatal and if other risk factor then start from beginning of the pregnancy now uh, like uh, whenever the patient is admitted with any complication there are three to four five fold more risk of uh, uh, vt as compared to uh, when the patient is admitted without complications so main part that you have to remember this red line now stroke in scd woman so acute stroke is a acute medical emergency that would require cons urgent consideration for ex exchange transfusion now uh, you got it people that acute stroke is one of the indication for urgent ex exchange transfusion rapidly exchange transfusion is done that would decrease the long-term neurological damage acute uh, stroke is a medical emergency urgent brain imaging a referral to stroke physician and hematologist so now again you got it another indication for uh, exchange transfusion that has to be done rapidly that is the acute stroke in SED women now acute anemia in SED women so acute anemia is because of the erythrovirus that is the parvovirus B19 usually we already know that this virus called red cell maturation arrest so aplastic crisis and how we'll get to know it there would be when we'll do uh, the bl blood uh, blood picture we'll find reticulocytopenia treatment with blood transfusion has to be done and be, um, from there could be vertical transmission of this virus so baby can get anemia so they should be referred to the fmu apart from this so rare causes of anemia in the pregnancy would be malaria associated malaria infection splenic sequestration in the mild type of phenotype so these are all about the uh, like uh, uh, complications that occur in scd women so that's all i had to say in intra uh, like antenatal care any one of you have got any question okay intrapartum care in scd women this was also a part three question so usually uh, the aim would be to deliver them by 30 to 40 weeks of pregnancy our patient to be explained about abruption preeclampsia peripartum cardiomyopathy sickle cell crisis and unexplained death these are increased and these are unpredictable so they should be birth plan about the time place mode of delivery analgesia additional requirement in the in that delivery and to avoid all this uh, the complication usually uh, to prevent late uh, pregnancy related late complication the delivery to be done by 38 to 40 weeks of pregnancy now this would be very important points to cover in the answer so intrapartum care it has to be in the hospital who can manage the complication of scd and high risk pregnancy multidisciplinary approach senior midwife in charge senior obstetrician and a serious hematologist to be informed when the labor is confirmed blood to be cross matched if there are atypical antibodies women to be kept warm and adequate fluid replacement and they should be adequate uh, uh, using a fluid balance chart uh, because we don't want to overload the fluid also abg to be done 
oxygen therapy because we uh, uh, oxygen saturation if it is 94% or less CTG monitoring anesthetic review in third trimester all type of analgesias except pethidine and um, re, uh, if cesarean section is done then the consideration for regional analgesia risk of CS uh, increase because of uh, uh, associated risk of preeclampsia IGR Women will SCD can be offered vaginal birth or V back. Now some of them have got hip replacement because of avascular necrosis. So accordingly, the suitable position for the delivery to be discussed. So because if there is a poor, a, a poor previous avascular necrosis of hip, that would lead to poor hip rotation and abduction. So this way, the intrapartum care has to be. Um, arrange in the woman with SCD. So when the examiner asks you a question, give them formulated answer. Now a few more things to know that the, uh, if the labor is more than 12 hours, increase risk of um, painful crisis. So usually if the patient has got recurrent crisis, long duration of labor to be avoided. And if any raised temperature, there is low threshold for investigation and antibiotics. So this uh, you may get this in a question that how long the, the, uh, like, uh, the, uh, the labor is when the patient would have increased incidence of uh, a painful crisis. So it is more than 12 hours. Now in terms of postnatal care. So uh, 21 uh, to 25% of the woman will have crisis post delivery okay so this number is important for part two people and it is more common following general anesthesia hydration oxygenation early mobilization anti thrombotic stocking and thrombo profile access um, uh, when the patient is, is in uh, is in hospital six weeks post delivery so this this is a change about the thrombo profile access previous uh, previous guideline it was uh, uh, vaginal birth and cesarean section it was different uh, uh, different recommendation but now in this guideline thrombo profile access for every woman would start 28 weeks pregnancy till six weeks postnatal so that, that this part you should remember neonatal care so neonates and Young infants, their risk of uh, adverse effect of opioids, codeine should not be given in the breastfeeding. Dihydrocodeine, tramadol, or other opioids can be given in lower effective doses. Uh, infant to be monitored for breathing difficulties, constipation, or uh, difficult feeding. Breastfeeding, they can breastfeed. And uh, baby early testing for SCD to be offered. That's all about the neonatal care. Now, contraceptive advices. So, usually method that are preferred, that would be LNG, IUS, and DMPA. And there is a reduction in sickle cell pain crisis with the progesterone preparation. Now, a CHC can be considered, but cardiovascular risk factor assessment has to be done. Uh, uh, or a cardiovascular risk factor has to be minimized to decrease the potential risk. Copper IUCD will be category two because there is a risk of blood loss. Barrier methods are safe, but yeah, they are less effective. So that's uh, they say about the like uh, contraception uh, advices with the sickle cell disease. So this much, uh, what is the uh, about the this guideline? Uh, so now I have put some questions. Any one of you have got any question can ask me. Okay, so there are a few questions. Yes, I just have uh, one question. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, is there any differentiated point between the pneumonia and the acute syndrome? The acute syndrome? How to differentiate between them in patient with sickle cell disease? Pneumonia. See, pneumonia. They would uh, like. Uh, um, there would be fever. And uh, all that uh, uh, like uh, inflammatory marker will be high. The chest X-ray finding would be there, or maybe there may not be there. In acute chest syndrome, usually if you find if you have to differentiate, that uh, inflammatory marker will not be raised. 
and uh, there should there are a, a different kind of like uh, new uh, infiltrates that you will see in the x-ray mm. and this x-ray infiltrates that will be different in uh, if the patient has pneumonia sometime all of the patient when in, have pneumonia they will not have so much of x mm -hmm. in scd you will find new infiltrates okay thank you very much thank you so sickle cell disease uh, is most common inherited condition recommended daily dose of folic acid is answer 5 mg yes e yeah, that is now e. it is clear yes so a sickle a 26 year old woman admitted with the symptoms of chest pain tachypnea shortness of breath chest x ratio new infiltrate so what will be the answer a yes. acute chest syndrome. Yes, acute chest syndrome. So now, uh, the thirty-three or uh, thirty-three old presented in preconception clinic. She would like to become pregnant, and she has been tested for sickle cell disease. She is taking a number of medication. Advice to stop one medication three months before. What is the medication? It is a uh, L hydroxymide uh -huh. contraception for three months. Okay. Yes. So if you have got uh, E and L as the, you have to see option E, you have to see option L. Option L is much better than E, so you will uh, put L. Okay. So a 28 year old woman, 16 weeks pregnant, she attends antenatal clinic, seen by hematologist and uh, obstetrician, taking folic acid. Advice to attend uh, to obtain some substance prophylactic that she has not taken in last 12 months. What prophylactic thing she should take if she has not taken in last 12 months? Influenza vaccine, ma'am. B? Yes. Influenza. influenza. Yes. So influenza vaccine has to be taken yearly basis. So uh, sickle cell disease patient, 14 weeks pregnant, seen by midwife. And she has rubella immune negative for HIV syphilis. Her hemoglobin is 8.4. So what you will do? Refer to hematologist, ma'am. Refer to hematologist. So look for the better answer. Undertake a further uh, test to assess iron levels, ma'am. I am a team. I patient who uh, uh, usually I just explained you also patient has to go of uh, like these patients are at a risk of iron overloading so before you give her more iron you have to check ferritin level if it is less than 30 then only iron supplementation to be done so be uh, specific about it okay this you okay I have already put the answer so pneumococcal vaccine has to be administered every five years. Okay, so this is the last question. Not uh, like uh, 22 year old Afriko Caribbean woman, 30 weeks pregnant with sickle cell disease. Um, she's having progressive cough, fever, excruciating bilateral chest pain, shortness of breath. This is first pregnancy. Uh, uneventful so far. She has serial scan, uh, whichever were normal. Observation blood pressure 100 by 60, pulse rate 118, respiratory rate 32 per minute. Temperature is high, you can see 38. Oxygen saturation is low, 84. Chest auscultation has crepitations, no wheeze, no cough tenderness. So, invest these are the investigations WBC 19, hemoglobin 9.3. And platelet 325, reticulocyte 16, e ASR 35, ECRP 80, pulmonary uh, infiltrate seen bilaterally on x ray, VQ scan normal. That means there is no embolism, ECG sinus rhythm. So, what is the answer? A, ma'am, A, oxygen analgesia, broad B. spectrum antibiotics. B. B. Yeah, but the answer is B. Exchange transfusion also because it is acute chest syndrome.
okay this question is from strategy so that's all i had to say people uh, anyone any question and for part three people we do have a, a mock in delhi offline so you guys can come whosoever is interested can contact so anyone any question any question okay thank you for joining people all the best for your upcoming exams thank you